welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Carrie, and today's video is going to be the mobile home pros and cons. Highly requested video. I seriously get requests on this pretty much every single week, and I just honestly haven't had the time to sit down and film it. But since we're moving this week, I wanted to go ahead and get this video done while I'm still living here. So yeah, anyway, we're gonna get right into it. So then I'm gonna start with the pros first because obviously I live in this trailer and there's more pros than there is cons in my opinion. But the number one pro is the fact that it's cheaper. Um, so this is great for those who are on a budget, who have young children, um, or you're just starting out and you're looking for a first time home. I find that trailers are so much cheaper than even apartments or housing, even older houses. Um, the, for instance, the trailer we lived in next door, the one that I showed you guys a picture montage of, that trailer, I was able to rent that in my area for $350. Yeah, that's cheap. And yes, it was in rough shape when we moved in, so we did get a good deal because part of the cheap rent was the fact that the place needed a lot of work and I was not paying any more than that. I was like, if you're willing to keep the rent cheap, I will fix it up slowly um, to where it's nicer for my family. And my landlord was nice enough to allow that. And I lived there for three years um, and fixed that trailer up as best as I possibly could on a very cheap budget. And it worked out. It was a win-win because I had, I was a first time mom. My husband was a first time dad. We were struggling. So when we lived there, it made ton, a ton of sense and it worked out perfectly for us. So the fact that it was cheaper was wonderful. And you can also, by the way, talking about that trailer next door, we were actually in the process of buying this trailer and the trailer next door before we found out we were moving. That's a whole other story. If you missed any of those videos, I'll have those linked down below. But um, that trailer next door, the two bedroom, one bath, that trailer is only worth $9,000. That is like, like spick and span to the T. Um, and it's not that way at this moment. Like the siding on the side of the trailer needs to be replaced. So the value will go down as well. And that is a 92, by the way. That trailer is a 92, believe it or not. It's not that old. I mean, I've seen older trailers um, look nicer than that one. But it's only $9,000 if you were to buy that trailer outright. And if you think about it, that is super cheap. You could basically have your mortgage. You wouldn't even have a mortgage anymore. You could just pay it off in cash, basically and fix it up real nice and make it your home forever. Like how wonderful would that be? So the fact that they're cheaper is great. The number two um, pro is the fact that you live in a smaller area, so you have to clean less. Um, you also have less. It, it kind of teaches you to live minimalistically without even trying, honestly, because we used to live in a really large house and it was really easy to just get whatever you wanted because we had a ton of space to fill it, um, to fill that house up. But when you live in a single wide, you have to be mindful of like what type of furniture you're bringing in, your couch size, um, your TV, like TV stand. In our case, our TV stand fit perfectly in the already built-in area. Um, so you just gotta be mindful of what you bring into the house because it can look cluttered and very cramped very quickly. So it kind of helps you um, as far as cleaning goes. You end up having, having less, so you don't have to clean as much. So that is my second pro. The third pro is the fact that they're movable. So I've seen people buy a trailer in like a mobile home park, live there in the mobile home park, pay off that trailer and then move it to a piece of land that that's where they're gonna be forever. Um, I think that's great. I think it's so awesome that you can literally hire someone to move your trailer wherever you want it to go. Obviously the further away it is, um, and in some cases some trailers are not able to move you know, over state lines, but sometimes, like for instance, I live out in the country, so if I was to buy a trailer in town, I could have it moved out here to a piece of property for like three, three to five thousand dollars, depending on the size of my trailer, the condition it's in, stuff like that. But the fact that you can move them is really awesome because obviously not everyone wants to live in a trailer park forever people want to have their privacy most people like to live out in the country um it doesn't matter what you if you like the city or not most people like to be secluded when it comes to their home so i feel like the fact that they can be moved is great anyway that was the three pros i could go on and on about pros honestly because i love this trailer um it's just 
it's just small, so everyone in your family, like, you just have to be close to each other, if that makes sense. You have to make do with what you have, and to me, that's what makes living here so great, because I have literally done so much to this trailer without spending a ton of money, and I have completely changed the look of this place. Like, before, it was all one color. I painted everything. I redid the countertops, all in, like, on a super cheap budget. I think total, if I could calculate... I really want to do this. I want to go through and like add up everything that I've done, like paint wise. I think it was it's thirty or twenty dollars a can of paint. So twenty, two, four, six, eight. I've only spent like maybe two to three hundred dollars on this place. Literally painting. That's it. And because paint supplies aren't that much, and usually I just buy mine from Dollar Tree. I've painted every room a, a different color of paint, so this bedroom is a different color than the living room, kitchen, etc. So all those gallons of paint, I only paid twenty dollars for. Um, I just recently painted the bathroom. I got my pendant lights cheap, like fifty uh, or fifteen dollars for two of them. So I have done so much to this place but on such a small budget and it has literally changed this the look of this house so it being smaller means you can do more to make it look nicer without spending more so you can have a nice home but it'll just be smaller so those are just some of the pros i mean i could literally go on and on but anyway um we're gonna move on to the cons so the number one con in my opinion is storms so this really doesn't have to do with the trailer i mean it kind of does but storms scare me already no matter where i'm at but you put obviously i'm in a single wide you put a big bad storm coming and i do get scared i have two young kids i am a mom i want to protect them but when you live in a single wide there's not much space to hide to kind of take cover if that makes sense so anytime there's a hurricane, we usually leave our house and we take our dogs and we go somewhere safe. Um, that's just one of the cons of living in a mobile home. It's just, they're not that big. So obviously, and they're light, they're easy to be destroyed. Um, so when a bad storm comes, I do get a little freaked out, but all that can be avoided. I just literally leave the house and I just hope for the best when I come back. And there's been times where we've had a really bad storm while we've been home. And I always stay alert and aware of my surroundings. And if something was to happen, obviously I would do whatever I had to do to protect my family. But that's just, I feel like that happened. That's a, just a mom's point of view, in my opinion. My husband does not get scared of anything, honestly. He, like, doesn't even want to leave when there's hurricanes. I have to force him to leave. I'm like, you're coming with us. But he will just ride it out. He's not scared of stuff like that, like I am. But anyway, the next thing I'm going to talk about... This is another con, and I'm going to be 100% real with you guys because I'm always honest, and I always pride myself on being honest with you. So if you're looking into getting into an older mobile home, keep in mind that the bottom of your trailer, the side, like the, I don't know what it's called, the underpinning, is that what it's called? Whatever it is that they, that holds up your insulation, it's like a fabric almost. Because it's not sealed off because all you have is like, um, you know, your vinyl siding or whatever and like the metal, what is that? Skirting. So you have your skirting up, but it doesn't keep critters out. And what I mean by critters are like field mice, mice, um, they will try to get in your trailer if you are not making sure that your house is sealed off properly. And I know a lot of people get freaked out by critters. I know, trust me, I know. I do too. When we lived next door, that place was so bad. It was not insulated um, properly. And every year I had to fight. I had to literally go through every single step every year during winter time to make sure that nothing would come in the house. I had two young kids. I'm not, I don't want critters getting in my home, obviously. So I literally had to seal off food. I had to do whatever I had to do to make sure that nothing smelt food and that like, nothing wanted to come in. Um, it was very difficult to deal with. It is very, it's one of those embarrassing situations that, you know, you get something in your house and you freak out and call the exterminator or you call, you know, you exterminate it yourself, whatever you have to do, but it sucks. And that's part of living in a trailer. I feel like it's very common. And before I have any negative comments on this, I know for a fact, for a fact that every mobile home on our road that I live on, I know everybody here, 
they all have had issues with it before. So it's not just my trailer. It's not just the trailer next door. It happens to almost every trailer I know of unless it's brand new and unless it's you know sealed properly. So when we moved in here, I had to seal this place off. We got some spray foam. It's like comes in a can. I think it's called um, Gaps and Cracks. And we just sealed any little crack and gap that we could find. I went around and caulked all the bottom of the baseboards just to make sure that nothing smelt food or crumbs, especially with kids like, you know, eating and stuff. I wanted to make sure nothing got in here. Luckily, this trailer is very well insulated and very well sealed. So we haven't had issues here, um, but we've only been through one or two winters here and those winters really weren't that bad. Um, but when we lived next door, I'm not even gonna lie, we had an issue and it was so hard to deal with. <sighs> That's one thing, but just keep that in mind. If you're trying to buy an older mobile home, you need to make sure it's sealed off properly. Call an exterminator, call someone to seal your the underneath of your trailer. Um, Angela, she's doing, she did her pros and cons video and she's actually remodeling her single wide. And I seen on one of her videos, she did spray foam insulation underneath her trailer and that is awesome. I don't know how much it costs her to get her single wide done. I'm gonna ask her because that is a great alternative to um, you know that nasty behind insulation they put under there that gets moldy and gross. So anyway, that's just one of the cons and that's just me being honest. So the next con is the price obviously goes down over time. Um, no matter what I've done, to the inside of this trailer. I could obviously, if I own this place, I could rent this for a lot more. You know, the more work I do to the inside, I could rent it out, you know, for a higher price. But the value of the actual trailer will not go up. It just continues to go down. It's kind of like a car. Once you drive your car off the, um, the car lot, that price just drops like that. It's just how it is. I, um, like I mentioned, I was in the process of buying this place and buying the trailer next door as well, along with the property. And the guy, multiple people I talked to, honestly, first of all, it's hard to get a loan with a mobile home. And not only that, but usually, you know, they don't want to help you get a loan because the price continues to go down. It's never going to, you know, go up. And the guy or the people that I called as far as like the loans go, they were willing to give us a loan, but only for the property. They weren't going to give us one for the mobile homes. So it, it really does suck sometimes when you're trying to get a loan to buy a trailer unless you go for a brand new one, which is outrageous, by the way. New mobile homes are so expensive. I cannot even believe how much they have just changed over time. I mean, you're, we were when we went, it was one of the mobile homes was like $130,000 just for a double wide. That doesn't include moving it to your land or land costs. I mean, it was a lot of money for some you know, double wides. But I guess if people are wanting to buy a mobile home for the rest of their life and live there for the rest of their life, that would be the route to go, um, depending on how much your housing is. But honestly, the housing costs here are the same as the mobile home. So anyway, if it was me in this moment, I would never buy a new mobile home where I live because like I said, it is the same price to just go and buy a brick home. So anyway, so that is it. The price goes down, the critters, and storms. Um, on Angela's video, she mentioned storage. That is another con, um, but honestly, I can get around that. I use my house as I, my furniture as storage, so like our dressers. I use underneath my bed as storage or closets. So I've made do with the storage space, if that makes sense. I don't have a ton of stuff, um, which is nice, but if you have a lot of children, I get that storage is a definite must. So just keep that in mind. The smaller your trailer, the less storage you have. And then just as like a little bonus, I wanted to share with you guys my husband's point of view. So I asked him one night to, you know, think about some pros and cons to help me out with some ideas. And he was like, I can't think of anything. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he goes, attic space. And I about die laughing. I'm like, what? I'm like, attic space, out of everything about our mobile home, you're going to say attic space, but it makes sense now that he like explained it to me. So he was basically saying like how I always ask him to move lights or to put new lights in. Like I hate where our lights are in the kitchen. The light is not above the table and the lights where the pendants are 
aren't above the countertop. So I'm always like, can you move those? Can you move those boxes? And he's always like, no, I can't do it. We don't have attic space. So he was saying if we had attic, if we had an attic, he could do that for me and he could also have storage space as well and the vents wouldn't be on the floor. They would be up, usually the AC would be up in the ceiling. So I 100% agree with him that not having an attic is kind of little. It's kind of a con. It's something I can deal with, but I don't know. I think it was kind of funny that out of all the things he said attic space. So I guess if you have a guy or a husband, you know, and he is an electrician as well, <laughs> and he wants to install new lights and stuff, attic space is a must. So you will not get that in a mobile home unless it's like a newer one because it's crazy. Nowadays, some mobile homes have attics and some of their air vents are on the ceiling, which is crazy because I've only ever been in mobile homes that have them on the floor and that don't have attic space. Now my friend, she had a double wide and she had like huge vaulted ceilings. I think that's what they're called, vaulted, vaulted ceilings, is that right? But they're like, you know, peaked and there's just different structural looks and I love that about double wides. What baby? Ooh, yes, in just a second, okay? But anyway, so, that is it for the pros and cons of this video. Y'all please don't forget to go check out Angela's video. It'll be linked down below. Her channel name is Living for Less. She did a pros and cons video and it was great. She did a great job on that and I want y'all to watch it. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see all of you in my next video. Bye y'all.